it took me a long, long time to action that separation because I felt like there was it, there was a wall of impossibility around it. Yeah. Um, there were family circumstances, family, yeah. his family, ill health, and eventually losing a parent. There mm. was financial reasons, but mainly, obviously, our son. I just thought, mm. I can't. You don't break... I don't know. I... I mean, my parents separated when I was in my teens and, you know, I look back retrospectively and think they probably should have done that years before they did as well. I get it now. A lot of children of divorced parents say that, don't they? Mm. It's just why did they, you know, the fact that they stayed together for us feels so bad because they'd have been happier had they gone the separate ways. It's really interesting to hear you say that. And I watched, uh, and I think I, uh, again, you know, in retrospect, I watched my parents stay together, if technically Mm. together, Mm way too long I watched them do this big long elongated version of mm. what I felt I, I was at the beginning of the road mm. of with my partner where eventually my parents were in separate rooms they worked in different cities mm. they had secret new partners uh, and as that as that went on over the years they lived in this they weren't they didn't like each other it was a, a horrible find a bundle of lies mm. that, and, and actually I genuinely look back god it's hard not to get emotional I look back at that childhood and think it was the lies and the dislike of each other it was living in that space with two mm. people who didn't like each other who weren't there together who had no physical proximity mm. with each other I remember seeing them hug once in my life my parents wow. and it was a Christmas yeah. day drunk and I remember as a child getting in on the hug and then yeah feeling guilty for decades yeah. that I'd wrecked the one hug I'd seen them have mm. and I didn't want my son growing up with that and I thought actually it was that was another thing where I thought I don't want my son to grow up with two people who don't behave like they like each other mm. I would rather he grew up with two separated parents who were happy um, <laughs> um but yeah he he has been the most classy classy uh ex yeah. I could ever have ever ever hoped for and that is above and beyond the number one reason that's made this from my point of view a successful separation it, and, and, and there are lots of things to take into account in terms of the actual physical leaving I, I, mm. and I think one of the main ones is if you are the person who's doing the leaving and the person who's left doesn't want to be left I think it's really, yeah. really important to take responsibility and ownership yeah. for the hurt you are causing that person yeah. and not to brush over it, not to expect them to be fine, even years on. Yeah. Um, and not yeah, to, you're right. not to live to with shame it, and guilt. Yeah. It's not, yes. it's not mm-hmm. about, um, it's not about, you know, you, if you, you, you need to be in unbearable pain all the time to do that. Mm-hmm. That's not what I mean. Again, but you can... what I would do differently in separation or in divorce, I mean, they're two very distinct things because once you've made the decision to divorce, I think it's quite difficult to pull it back. Um, and, you know, if the question is, what would I do differently in divorce? Well, everything. Where do I start? Right. Everything. I mean, it, it's you're not prepared for it. It, it. it becomes about financial settlements far too quickly. The The ability to talk about the children and what's best for them um yes it, it it it's really is the priority the finance has to come a lot later the the main thing mm. and again i i think the, the 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 ease of divorce would be made a lot clearer if there was a separation of um well-being impacts for all people concerned including where you're going to live but access to children uh, and indeed mm. what is best for the children and thankfully that was managed reasonably well um, but it, it gets very confused with, you know, and ultimately I think you should have a, a, a letter or you have a statement which says this is the sep- terms of separation and, and what will happen to the, the children, including probably how the children are told. Uh, I was unfortunate that I wasn't I wasn't present when they were told about it, which was quite right. distressing. Um, and then again, these kind of things cause a lot of resentment on both sides mm. because people just don't have any foresight they don't have skills they're getting bad advice from people about what needs to happen Mm. and emotions are running high and i really could have benefited from from some kind of support and advice um from the moment the moment of separation right through to deciding divorce was the um was the best way forward that i had no 
understanding of it at all and it was it was very difficult to navigate it sounds like that whole emotional journey piece was missing so the bit where you talk about the feelings and the emotions and then you have some time to acclimatize to a separation before then having to make some of those bigger decisions and you're right putting the the important stakes in the ground like the children and navigating that bit well so that you're building um, the foundations for a co-parenting relationship I think without making excuses the fact we were over in Singapore um, away from family I Mm. think it you know it was probably it was probably worse um, than it would have been in the UK I think there was an Mm. acceleration very quickly and also I was living in a different city so it was just Mm. incredibly hard and and again uh, it's not an excuse but I I think it, it boils back down to um, before you make a decision to separate, you know, how do you keep your relationship positive? Well, it all boils down to communication and it, and it boils down to, um, you know, are you, are you, do you want the same things? I mean, I think it, again, it goes back to, I don't believe that marriage and I, I don't look at it now like I did 10 years ago as this sort of infinite, um, relationship sort of concept much as i'd like to believe that is possible and i also don't think divorce is the is the shame or it warrants the shame that i felt for many years i think and one of the ways i would urge people to talk to children if they have them is to very much express that it is entirely normal and it's a very positive thing you know divorce is not this big like i think society makes it men are embarrassed to talk about it i think they feel a lot of shame particularly when they may be estranged from family and not living and again same applies to women if they're not if their if their lifestyle has changed dramatically i think people are terrified of admitting it in some ways um and that shame um is not warranted and and one thing we talk a lot about in blue mind is encouraging people to see it as just a life event and yes it's not great and 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 i don't think divorce that frankly is the issue i think the issue is for me and a lot of men quite a, a journey of... then um, and quite an quite an emotional roller coaster by the sound of it you complete sort of reset and reboot mm. after your first marriage going into a second one and that not working that must mm. have been quite hard on your self confidence at that point yeah it really was i think the well the reason i i know the reason that i do what i do now is because after my second divorce i was put on antidepressants i was uh, very very low mm. I piled on the pounds. I didn't look after myself, didn't respect myself at all. So my, yeah, my self-worth and my mm-hmm. self-love was, was non-existent. And it mm-hmm. wasn't actually until I found the courage to seek some help and exercise. I know it sounds crazy, but the exercise completely changed my world. So did nutrition. Um, mm-hmm. Learning about how to look after myself gave me back some of my self-respect I was able to come off the antidepressants after about six months and that's when my passion particularly for helping other women going through a similar thing really Mm. ignited and that's why I requalified to do what I do now and it's a beautiful thing that I'm able to do the coaching that I used to do with the stress management and the ALP and then add in the physical side of things as well. I think the first thing that's really interesting is helping people like get back in touch with their physicality. I think so many of us actually lose connection to our body. And certainly when we go through something like a separation or divorce as well, like looking after ourselves, you know, self-care can be one of the first things that goes out the window, you know. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're stressed, we feel down. We may tend to like comfort eat, comfort drink the weight piles on, we feel bad about ourselves when it comes to a self-perpetuating circle. What we found is if you can put people back in touch with their body and just start taking small steps about about moving more, um, and there's lots of research about you know, daily exercise um, actually changes our neurotransmitters, yeah, we'll get feel-good endorphins, we'll start to actually lift our moods, feel less anxious, less stressed. Mm-hmm. It's about getting that, that movement part in and starting to move the body. And that's funny, it seems to have, then have an effect on thought patterns and brain so obviously that's one level we want to work the physical level make sure we're nourishing the body in the right way with, with the right kinds of food you know cutting back on the sugars cutting back on the alcohol putting in fresh natural mm-hmm. foods so we're promoting you know, good gut health um but then on the i guess the psychological emotional level uh, one thing interesting there was like you know recognizing people that yeah it's natural to have a grieving process but also to not spend too long there, if they can, to recognise that, yeah, okay, these things are lost. But if you, if you dwell on what you've lost, you're going to drive yourself mad. So actually, we talk about switching from 
obstacle to opportunity thinking. So it's like, okay, this thing's happened and I'm going to grieve the things that I've lost, but what are the opportunities that I have going forward? What's changed for me that I can see a positive way ahead and starting to switch to a more positive way of thinking. And once you do that, and there are daily exercises, we give people to do that, things like a daily gratitude practice, you actually quite quickly start to change your mindset. And in conjunction with physicality, that can have a very fast effect on, on kind of turning people around to feel more positive about things and start to build that confidence up. And then the last part, I'd say, is as Claire said, we get more risk adverse. So it's starting to learn to take small risks that you're comfortable with at first, but are just going to slightly push you out. Like go and start a new hobby. Like a, we, again, we let our ego hold us back. You know, if we've never danced, but we think, I always love to dance. But it's like, I don't want to look a fool. Well, guess what? You know, a child, when they go to a dance class, never dance, doesn't worry about looking like a fool. They just enjoy the process. So 